You really, you really think so? That capitalism breeds oppression? Yeah, I really do. How, how, how so? I mean, what, what form of government does not breed oppression? I think you have a better chance in a socialist government for people to be equal. In a capitalistic society, corporations, unfortunately, now have taken over. Did a socialist country ever exist? Not in the purest form, but that, I don't think that means that it could never exist. I think it. I think it's worth a try, because well, capitalism, in my opinion, doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So why not try a different form of government? But didn't people try, you know, socialism in the Eastern Europe, or in yeah, Asia? Yeah, and then it turned out to be oppressive because the people in power took over and pressed everybody under them. But I'm talking about true socialism, where everyone really is equal. But how, I mean, it would never happen in this country. But and I don't, would, would it happen anywhere in the world, do you think? I think with the way corporations are right now, uh -huh. I think it would be very difficult, if but, not but, impossible. But any, any place in the world, do you think that socialism will ever work? Possibly one day, yeah. But right now, no. I think corporations are too big and too powerful. But I don't think it's always going to be that way. Maybe not even in my lifetime will it ever happen. But you believe in socialism? Yeah. Have you believed in socialism all your life? Um, probably as long as I've been interested in politics. I mean, okay. you know, I don't know if I was 12 and believed in socialism okay. <laughs> or knew what it was. <laughs> Okay. But, you know. But why, well, what made you think that socialism somehow would be a better system than capitalism? Because I think equality is better. Uh huh. So, do you. What's that? <laughs> just, just shaking what I'm recording. It's an interesting oh. conversation. You know why? Because I was born in the USSR. So, the country really? that, uh, that claims to be like the first socialist, uh, uh, people's peasants uh, paradise, uh, bread to the people, power yeah, to the but people. Look at what it turned out to be. Though. Exactly. That's the problem. But then, look, uh, they tried the uh, so called socialism in, uh, let's say, China. Yeah. They and tried socialism uh, that in, also uh, didn't work, uh, in uh, Cambodia. They tried the uh, socialism. Socialism, while well, still trying in Cuba, uh, they—I mean—they call it socialism. They call uh, North Korean government a socialist. I mean, socialism never really existed. But so that you, doesn't mean it couldn't. But we, it's been 1917 was the first time when the ideas of Marx, Engels, and all these people—they tried, Lenin tried to implement in reality. And by the way, from the get-go, he was killing people left and right. I mean, from the get-go. Uh, you think Cubans. we don't kill people? We kill people in this country, too. This is uh, where I take an umbrage with this kind of statement. There is a fundamental difference. And again, I'm speaking from first-hand experience. I live there, okay? When, in the middle of the night, totally innocent people, in fact, true believers in the system that they built and fought for, socialism, like uh, remember 1936, 1937, Stalin's purges, the true communists, the true believers in the system, the true supporters of the government were carted away and their relatives never heard from them again. Innocent people. In our capitalist system, we never had uh, uh, a case where innocent people will be taken out of their homes, in fact their whole families, in fact the whole communities, and sent to gulags or sent to death camps. Uh, Never, never happened. So how can you equate, you know, capitalism uh, uh, with socialism saying that, oh, it's in the capitalism, the same thing was happening. I mean, I, I just don't get it. Right. And it's not, it wouldn't happen because you're against a corporation, possibly. It might one day. I don't wait, know. Wait, wait, wait. We're talking about the past, not the future. You just, you just made a statement which, which really, you know, cuts through. No, no, no. In the past, no, it hasn't happened. But so, that doesn't mean so it won't capitalism. Happen. But you say capitalism breeds oppression. Breeds oppression meaning it's based on some past uh, past events. So in other words, see, and you've just said that in the past, in capitalism, capitalism was as brutal as so-called socialism. Oh, You're no, right, socialism didn't exist. No, I didn't say the past. I so, said it, it might happen one day. It might. So under cap... But right now... But let, let's think logically. I'm sorry for interrupting no. you. So let, let's, let's, let's think, think logically. 
for almost 100 years. In uh, 2017, it's going to be exactly 100 years since for the first time so-called so socialism was tried in practice in Russia. Not in theory, but in practice. We all know how it all turned out, okay? Now, for over 200 years or so of capitalism, we never had a case where innocent, and again, this is the key word, right. innocent people would be sent to prisons, gulags, or whatever. We have law and order, and if you know somebody slips through the tracks, nothing's perfect, but we do the best we can. Not en masse, uh, we had you know, people uprooted, murdered, uh, annihilated. So in other words, uh, you agree with me that capitalism actually is not a brutal system, is it? I think it can be. But it's never no, been brutal. No, maybe not in the past that I know of, okay? That I know of. But I think it can turn that way. Okay, how? I think, I think uh, how, corporations uh, uh, have been given way too much power in not only this country, but all over the world. These corporations are... are uh, look. <laughs> what Did happens when it's too big to fail and... You know, oh, you, you can't. Well, it's it's a small example. I mean, we can go on and on why the whole thing happened. I'm I'm against the you know too big to fail either. And in fact, Romney, he's the one who would let you know General Motors or whatever go bankrupt, restructure, uh, you know, fine tune their finances so that it can reemerge, which happened in the past. Remember Intel, for example. Well, I don't. No, actually, not Intel. I'm sorry, IBM. IBM. IBM used to be a huge company. You know, one of the, I'm sure you know IBM. Uh, the, the company that employed hundreds, uh, perhaps thousands uh, of, of people, it went bankrupt, it restructured, it reemerged as, as a successful and financially profitable company. So I agree with too big to fail, you know, but I don't know, you know, whether you're for Obama or for Romney or Republicans, whatever. <laughs> But at least as far as Obama is... you're for Romney, right? Of course I'm for Romney. I'm for, I'm for the person who can take, the, especially now in this economy, whose experience is taking failing companies, turning them around, and making them profitable. But why by extension. why should companies be the main focus? Why, why should a company, I'll, a corporation, I'll, be the main focus of our government? Do, do you work? Yeah. Do you work? Do you work for the government or for a private entity? I work for a school. For your school, so you work for the government essentially. So this New is York State, th yeah. this is okay. So so th this is the entity that well supposed to be concerned about the profits, supposed to be concerned about finances, but not really. That that's why we're 16 trillion dollars in debt, more than 16 trillion dollars well, as of today. Well, a lot of that has to do with the wars that we're involved in. Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's, under it's, Bush, it's, it's, it's a different story. Under Bush, the wars weren't put in the. The um, deficit, but under Obama he put them in, so that's why. Because we have to pay for every place in the world where we have bases and we have wars and we have bombs. Speaking of wars, do you remember the date that we live in infamy? I'm sorry. Do you remember the date that we live in infamy? Yes. What are we supposed to do on December seventh, 1941? And it was a Democratic president back then, not George Bush. World War II has nothing to do with the wars we're in now. I'm how, not a complete how, pacifist. I'm uh, not. I think World well, War II... Well, not judging by your earrings, though. No, I'm not a complete pacifist. <laughs> and not judging by, you know, Manning. I mean, FDR, he would have executed this guy right I away for treason. The guy, the guy who divulged our secrets, this Bradley Manning, you know, this, this guy... Why do you say he would have killed him? You don't know he would have killed him. Well, he killed the Rosenbergs, for example, who gave uh, the uh, plans uh, uh, to the Russians of the atomic bomb. I don't he fried them, and absolutely rightfully so, on the electric chair. Okay. He would have fried this guy also. I don't think... F I think FDR was a good president. I don't think he was the greatest president, though. I mean, look at what he did to the Japanese. Like, I don't agree with that. But the point I'm trying to make is that he went to war. And yes, rightfully so, right? War. He wants to war. Right. Because if he didn't, we were not speaking either German or Japanese today, right? Probably German. Well, either one of them. Well, no, I don't or think both. the Japanese were going to try to invade us. Didn't but, but they did. off their oil supply or but, something, and that's why they, they attacked us? And why do you think Germany attacked uh, Poland? Germany, Germany and declared Anschluss. war on us because we declared war on Japan. But Japan also attacked a military base. 
We destroyed two of their cities and incinerated millions of people over there in cities. What about Dresden? Twice. Do you remember Dresden? Do you, yes. I mean, is there any difference whether you die as the result of an atomic bomb versus conflagration? I mean, I you die, you die. You attack us, you know, but you pay the consequences. Think, no, I don't think... But, but getting to Bush... atomic bombs should have been the consequence for what they did. They well, really it's, it's, it's a separate issue. I mean, we can talk but about that too. you're the one who made that the issue. I can make it an issue then. But you did. Yes. You're the one okay. who asked the, me the about reason, the date that we would live in it. But the reason... Correct. But the reason I brought it up is because uh, that day... Uh, Less than 3,000, two and a half or so thousand uh, men, mostly military men, died in Hawaii that day, right? In the same uh, state we are in today, just what, 15 or so miles away from here, we have more than 3,000 people uh, murdered on the U.S. soil, the largest loss uh, for the human... Yeah, you don't want to go to that subject with me. 9-11, I'm not going there. Well, but 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 I'm just trying to justify Bush going to war because I don't think it was justification. Okay. So if, if and he wanted to go to war with Iraq. Uh, well, we started with Afghanistan. Yes, that's because he had to start with Afghanistan. He wanted to start with Iraq, but he was forced to start with Afghanistan. And why would you attack an entire country for something supposedly? A group of terrorists did. Then how are we going to fight against the terrorism? I mean, it's how difficult. How are we fighting against terrorists now? Well, thanks to system established by Bush administration and totally and wholeheart wholeheartedly embraced by Obama. Strangely so. Unfortunately, but we yes. wholeheartedly but embraced. You know the what? No matter who's president, we're on a course, and that's just the way. Whether it's Romney or whether it's Obama, Obama, that's the course we're going to be on. Because well, we, we have, the course we were put on. Well, we have to be on alert because there are people who want to kill us. They want to kill you. They want to kill us. People who wanted to kill us. We want to kill people. So we were going to fight against those who are going to kill us, no? I mean, if somebody is approaching you with a knife, would you, you know, try of to defend course, yourself? But that's, that's not the same. But, it, but it's the same. Again, 9-11 happened. USS Cole was bombed. Yes. Uh, embassy in Kenya, in Tanzania, Colobo Towers, the list goes on and on. And right. After all, just, just a month ago, our ambassador, our own ambassador, the U.S. soil, because embassy, as you know, is the U.S. soil, was attacked. For the first time since 1979, U.S. ambassador of all the people was murdered murdered. So yes, they want to kill us and we have to defend ourselves. It's tough, it's difficult because it's like, like an army. Roosevelt... But you know happens in a vacuum, okay? 1979 didn't happen in a vacuum. So I try trying no, to say it's our fault? No, there was a reason why there was a reason why Iran didn't want us there. There's a reason why Iran hates us. They elected a president in the 50s we took him out. Who are we to do? What if we elected a president and Iran came in and said, we don't like him? And they come in and take him out. So you don't really draw the line between the governments that are oppressive and the governments that are democratic and free like our own. Oh, I don't think we're all that free here. Compared we're to in Iran? A free zone, we're in a free speech zone right Compared now. Compared to Iran? Compared to USSR? And again, I can speak from my own experience. Free speech zones in this country. Let, let, let me tell you this. If you were in the USSR at the time when I lived over there, with a the banner yes. stating, sure. you know... Some countries, you have more freedoms than others. No. Yes. There are countries where, where no. there are no freedoms. Not right. some, okay. no freedoms. So, and there's a fundamental difference between having some freedoms versus no, settle, none, zero, why zilch. We, why should we settle for some freedoms? We're having our freedoms systematically taken away from us. And in the name of being safe, why is that okay? If you came here uh -huh. so you could have freedoms, all right, then why would you voluntarily sit back and go, okay, now we're being attacked, so you can take some of my freedoms away to keep me safe. You, out of anybody, should be fighting against that. No, and I'll yes. tell you why. No, no, no. Because you've lived it. Yes, yes, and there should be... Uh, fr okay. <laughs> what was that? I just wanted to make sure my daughter was still oh, okay. here. <laughs> uh, the... the, the uh, 
It's like when we talk about, let's say, the uh, you know famous, you cannot uh, shout uh, fire in the right. crowded theater. Right. I mean, you have to use sort of uh, common sense as to what's allowed, what's not allowed. Sure. Uh, let's say you can swim on the one hand. On the other hand, you can swim only when the lifeguard is there. I mean, there are rules, there are regulations. You know what? Four years ago, uh -huh. her and I came here, uh -huh. and we were over on the campus, uh -huh. right up against where Hardball was being filmed. We uh -huh. had free reign to walk all over the campus. We could cross the street if we wanted to. Uh -huh. This year, we came here so we could go walk on the campus and look at all the shows live and hang out, and you know, just to be a part of it. Uh -huh. And we were told we were not allowed over there unless we had to tickets okay. or unless we were students or faculty okay. that we had to be on this side of the street this year why what happened oh, in four years because, to change that well first of all there's a difference between freedom and security yes you have to four compromise years ago, they weren't worried about security why four years 20, ago were we allowed over there 20 or 25 years ago you could board the plane Without the magnetometers. But I'm just talking about in the last four years. This is a perfect example. Four years this ago, is, we were over there, this, and now we're stuck here. Fine, I agree with you. This is a perfect example of this world being a dangerous world no. we live in. I think I think they like to tell us it's dangerous when they want to take our freedoms away. They who? Well, we, Barack the, Obama. The government. Anybody in the government. I don't think it's Obama. It's. It's anybody who becomes president. So you don't believe... Uh, I don't think there's going to be much of a difference between what... You know, we might have... She has health care now because... And, and so do most of my kids. Uh -huh. Because of, quote-unquote, Obamacare. Uh -huh. So at least that's a good thing. But we're, we uh -huh. get thrown bones, no matter who's president. You, you'll you get think, thrown a bone by Romney if he becomes but president. But we started the... Actually, we diverged the dramatically from where we started. We started with socialism. So well, when you were saying, you kept changing the subject. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, it's my you fault. You asked me about World War II, and then when I started I know, telling you, I know, you were like, "No, no, no, I we're know, not going to talk I know, about I that." Take, so. I take responsibility for that. But but uh, when you talk about it again, uh, uh, look, you're standing over here with this post. We just agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I said, "How about we just agree to disagree?" Because we're never going to agree agree on much. We might. You know, uh, I mean, that, that's what usually conversation leads to. I mean, if two people talk and uh, they're willing to find consensus, in most cases, you can. Uh, on the one premise that your logic and my logic is the same. If uh, if we agree that this is why you think this is why, then I think this is why, then we can find right. a common cause. Yes. But you fundamentally but according to politics, really, you support Romney and you're a member of the National Rifle Association. Correct. We're not going to agree on much according to politics. Just because. Okay, so Which socialism, is capitalism. I mean, that's what. That's what's good. That's you know, you what, can talk, you disagree. Right. I mean, you know. Unlike the socialism that the, no, it seems like you advocate. No, socialist society, true everybody. Socialism. Yes. That never exists and yes. never will. But, okay, but we have no true, what's it called? We have what we have, and I'm no, happy no, with what we have. Okay. We tweak it I'm this not, way or this so. way, we make it a little better, a little worse, but fundamentally, capitalism is the system that does work, that gives no, freedom. I don't it, believe that. It you works. don't believe that capitalism works? No, I don't. And I, I don't, no, I don't. And I don't think that a government should be based on capitalism. I don't. But you but don't actually, believe it should be based on socialism. So we no, just but, but the disagree. more government means more socialism. So in yes, other words... So, I believe in more government. But then you contradict yourself. No, actually, you don't. I'm sorry. You're saying capital, capitalism uh, is not... So you want socialism by dint of having more government uh, running the affairs of the country. Is, is that right? Yes. Okay. So the more government we have, the better life would be for everybody. I think if government did what I would like them to do, uh -huh. give us health care. But health care for all, okay? Uh -huh. I think we should be guaranteed uh -huh. certain things through our government. Pay, you know, pay uh -huh. for it with taxes. I'm fine uh -huh. with paying more taxes if we get something out of it and not just more wars. Uh -huh. You know? 
if we had health care, if we had housing and food, education. I mean, how could it be bad if everyone had an education? Well, you are an educator. Don't you think that we are the country that spends more money per student than any other country in the world ever? And yet, we're behind so many, so many countries. Right, so we're spending it incorrectly. I'm not saying throw money at the problem. Are you the member of the union? Um, yes, I'm a member of the union. So don't you think that we've got a little problem with the union? So that shield the, the not so great the teachers from being, well, fired well, that's or... tenure. I don't believe in tenure. I don't think tenure should exist. Uh -huh. You know, I don't think you should or anybody should be guaranteed not to be fired. If okay. you're doing a crappy job, then you should be fired. So I don't care if you sweep the streets or if you're a teacher or if you're a president. So we agree on something right there. there you go. You <laughs> <laughs> well, it was nice talking okay. to you. Okay, <laughs> back before okay. they leave. <laughs> All right, see ya. Bye-bye.